Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby. Today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 here in the back of our 2021 Mazda CX-5. So this is gonna be a very decent way, guys, of just carrying your bike. So it's not the most expensive, nowhere is it the most premium option out there, but it is just a tried and true decent way of getting your bikes wherever you wanna go. So it's really straightforward. We just have a simple little frame mount design here and two open wheel anchors or wheel hoops to go ahead and hold onto those wheels, which is gonna be excellent, of course, to go ahead and carry most of our standard and even up into our mountain bike range because you are going to have about a 35 pound weight capacity limit with this guy per bike so not going to be anything too crazy of course um, and again with that frame mount you are going to be limited on the type of bikes you can get on here why i say that well a if you have any carbon frame bikes unfortunately this frame contact can end up warping and deteriorating those carbon frame bikes and if you do have any women's bikes kids bikes or step through bikes you may have a hard time getting this horizontal purchase to work for you you may need to give yourself a bike adapter bar that clips in between your rear seat and your handlebars to give you that vertical post, or I'm sorry, that horizontal posting that you guys are gonna need to actually have that. So kind of keep that in mind um, going forward as you do have just a few limitations. So we do have our wheel hoops here and they are adjustable, which is really nice. We just have this little hand knob here, lefty loosey, righty tidy, of course, and that's gonna allow me to shift this across. I will say a little like um, lubricant can go a long way on this guy. Um, and also if you push down on this bottom flange, it makes it really easy to give you just a little bit to go through. You guys can see this has been shifted quite a lot here in the studio, hundreds of times in fact, and it's still holding up well, even with a few of those blemishes in there. So I really do like being able to adjust my wheel hoops. That's gonna be excellent if of course we have our longer wheel bases or bring somebody else out with us and then we can shorten up for anybody else that we wanna go there. Really, really versatile rack for what it is kind of limited to, which is great. And you do have just a little bit of length there and you can get pretty low on there. So you may not need a bike adapter bar for every uh, bike out there. Um, you'd only have so much track here though. You guys can see that's gonna be pretty much your limit that you're gonna to, going to wanna to bring that down to. But still, that's pretty low, especially for something like a step-through bike, that could be perfect for. Now, one of those premium features you are gonna be missing with this rack, though, is the capability of actually tilting away while in use on your vehicle. So if that's not the biggest of deal to you, oh no, we don't have to worry about it too much. We actually are gonna be able to drop this center mass, and I'll show you guys that just in a second. But you could start looking at some of your premium items if you guys do find yourself wanting to access that back cargo, whether you have this on here a lot and wanna get groceries every now and then and don't wanna go through the hassle of taking your bike off, or secondly, you just like it to where you can pull up to the trailhead, put it down, open that up, get those coolers, everything else. That can be an option. But honestly, if that's all we're losing, it's not gonna take us too much effort just to get this bike off. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that together. So we talked about our ratchet and arm system here and to release it, we just have our little button to press here on that lever. That's gonna let me take this off all the way. I like just letting it hang right there, ready to get put back in. And then I can just simply grab my bike, walk it out or lift it up however we want, and we're ready to ride. Now, as we mentioned earlier though, you actually can drop this center mass down. To do that, all we need to do, walk right up to the middle here. We have this little pin. We just simply pull that guy right out. That's gonna let this center mass drop. And now I'm gonna have access even to the back here of my CX-5. And that's still gonna give you plenty of clearance. Now we can get in there, get those coolers, bike helmets, anything else we might need from the inside. And quickly can go ahead and fold it down. So it really doesn't take too much time to get that out of the way. And then to walk it up, really, really simple. Simply walk it back up replace your pin and you're ready to go one more time. Now with any hitch mounted accessory, you're definitely gonna be adding a little length to your car and we definitely wanna watch our clearance. So from the ground here today to our wheel hoops are gonna be putting us right at 16 and about 15 16 of an inch. Now what I'll say to that though too, if you do have smaller wheels, they might dip in here just a little bit more. So do keep that in consideration when you guys are mounting up your bikes. Now the thing we're gonna look at is how much length we're adding to our vehicle. So from the rear of the bumper here today to our farthest point, which is gonna be our wheel cradle, actually our extension here is always just a little bit longer, I forget. That's actually gonna put you right at 23 inches to the very end there. So definitely a little length to consider. And like I said, we don't have a way of folding this up. So it is gonna be kind of static in this element. Now the one thing we can do though, is shorten down our sides and give you guys a preview of what it's gonna look like when you guys have it folded up inside your house. So to do that, same little system with these pens. We just simply pull it right out. We have a nice little safety cable holding them on so they don't go flying away. And then all I have to do, walk that up, insert that, and that's gonna really reduce my space down. I can do the same on the other side. Bring this guy up, set it in place, 
and there we are, nice and secure in there. So what's great about this, this gives you a good idea of how little of a footprint you can actually make inside of your, um, wherever you're storing it into. This is also really good for like apartment dwelling, right? Because we don't have a lot of room. And one thing that's really awesome about it, this shank actually gets removed as well if you want to. So maybe you're hint, hint, hint those winter months and you're really gonna have a lot of downtime, downtime with your bike or you just don't really have the space to store it in this configuration, bring that shank out and really reduce the amount of size, the amount of size you're gonna be taking up inside your storage. On the bottom here, you guys can see we have an inch and a quarter shank naturally. However, we do have a two inch sleeve converter allowing us to utilize our two inch shank. On the inside of that though, you are seeing a threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. Now those guys are pretty standard across the industry, but you love to see them. As I'm shaking this, it's shaking the entirety of the vehicle. That means we're all in line with one system, taking all that shaking play out, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bike rack, and especially our bikes. Here in our test course, we'll start by going through the solid. This is gonna show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Lastly, we'll go over the full speed bumps. We can see the up and down action. This will be just like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. So overall, I think this is still a very decent bike rack, like I said, guys, just to start getting your bikes up there. And honestly, it does it quite well. The other thing that I have with it though, not a lot of security measures for this guy. So there are gonna be a couple different ways of getting that for yourself. Of course, a lot of them available here at eTrailer.com. One thing I would suggest, maybe grabbing yourself a hitch lock and especially a cable lock to go ahead and secure your bikes to your carrier. That, no, that way nobody can walk off with them when they are unattended. We do have an offset camp backup camera here for ourselves. So we are probably going to get a lot here on our right, or I'm sorry, our driver's side of actually seeing out. However, in this configuration, probably going to lose a lot in the middle and a little bit to your passenger side. Now, when you do have this folded out and you have two bikes on there, like with any carrier, definitely going to lose a lot of that visibility. So keep it in mind. But I did like how we actually had our bikes on here. We weren't impacting, impacting our rear window. I could still see everything out of it, which is great. And even our taillights really weren't in that bad of a spot. Now, maybe you had a monster bike on here, it might be an issue, but like I said, we are kind of limited on our weight capacity with this guy. But overall, still very, very decent rack just to get you and your bikes to where you want to go in no time at all. Well, guys, I think that about does it for our look at the Swagman XC2 here on our 2021 Mazda CX-5. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching.